Let's talk about the episode. Let's talk about the episode. So, we got Nicole and Ava slapping each other. That was so immature. I mean, on so many levels. Ava... I know a whole revenge plot, a whole plan coming behind this, but you really don't have to do this. Like they already doomed from the start. They get they got together, um, they got together for cheating. So it ain't gonna last too long. Nicole, you ain't got to, I mean, Ava, you ain't got to really worry about nothing there, but I know you're gonna worry about that. This gonna be Steve and Kayla all over again for you. So I don't get it, I don't understand it, and you gonna do what you wanna do. Now, let's talk about the slap. I think Ava hit Nicole harder than Nicole hit Ava just by the hand gestures and how she did hers and Nicole like she did hers and Nicole was hoping she would come back, but she didn't get the chance to because Jake came along and stopped them. But Ava did get a little nice little slap in them. I think Nicole was trying to aim a little harder and slap her, but she ended up leaving a mark anyways on her face. But when it come down to the slap, um, it was really childish in my my case. It was really childish. Um, of course, Ava, you heard. You got all the right to be heard. Like I said, Rafe was wrong for that, and Nicole was wrong, too. That's supposed to be your friend. That was supposed to be your boyfriend. They've been sneaking behind your back all these months, lying to you. Demand. You should have slapped Rafe is all I want to see on this situation. You should have slapped Rafe, and you probably would have got away. Well, not really. You wouldn't have got away with it. Y yeah, you slapped the right person. In my eyes, it would have looked better if you would have slapped the out of rave. But he an officer of the law, he the commissioner, so you probably would have ended up getting arrested if you would have put your hands on him, even though you should have averted your anger towards him and not Nicole. But I kind of understand why you did that. It's wrong, but I think I would have liked to see you slap rave other than Nicole. But I understand why you did it, or that was your friend. You was there for her. She was there for you, and yeah, you kind of feel portrayed, which you have a right to be, and which and you have a right to feel that way. You have a right to feel all this pent up anger. You want to claw Nicole face off. You have all that right, and who am I to stop you from feeling the way you feel it? Cause they kind of did so-called friends and boyfriend treated you treated you wrong, even though you didn't have to go set the man up like you did. And the man almost had a whole prison turn behind your lies, and you setting that man up. But then again, I can't really be mad at that neither because. What's a woman to do when a woman out for revenge and you were just basically doing your one to trying to get him back because he did you wrong. So I can't really be mad at you. I can be mad at you, but how petty they was and how Rafe lied to you and Nicole lied to you and you basically caught them in the ad and well you basically caught them twice lying to you in your face that you saw them the third time actually kissing in the Horton Town Square so you already knew that they was lying to you once it came out of somebody else's mouth so I really can't be mad at be mad at you the way you acted because you want to get them a reaction because they basically lied to you in your face so, watch Jake and um, Ava end up getting together. They got history. They got mob history. He st she staying at his place. He already said, um, keep the fridge full with beer, of course. And she going to wine and dine him with her fancy cooking. So, watch they ended up. Watch they end up being a couple. Gabby, I ain't got no sympathy for you at all when it comes to you and your situation at all. 
You got exactly what you wanted. You at the top, now you lonely, and you ain't got a boyfriend to share to share it with. Look at you, all that scheming and backstabbing you did. The devil rolled your back. The devil made you do these things. You want to leave your man behind for that CEO position. Now you got the CEO position. Now you're crying and don't know why you're crying. You don't know if you're crying over your daughter that you don't talk about enough for my liking, or you don't know you boo hoo and hooing over with Jake at the moment. And Jake, I ain't got nothing for you neither because you knew exactly what you was getting into when you started dating her. She already didn't had your twin brother. Did you really think she was going to let those memories go away and start new memories with you without comparing you to, to your twin brother? Come on now. She a Kate Jr. And you really thought, oh, with me dating her, she won't think about Steph and she won't compare us to Jake, y'all was twins. Of course she comparing. She'll be a fool not to compare y'all. In fact, she wrong for dating two twin brothers. Because one deceased, I guess it's okay to go to the next one, but that's my feeling. She can do whatever she want with her body and date whoever she want or go down the whole Demira family all she want. I'm just saying, in my eyes, I didn't have one brother. What I look like, what I look like going to the next brother for? Like I said, who's next? Chad, Tony, Johnny, who next? You were just kissing on Johnny a couple of days ago. Now you up here, don't know if you got a man or lost a man yet. So, I, I, I'm not understanding why you playing with the family tree like this. And, Jake, I don't understand why you didn't think or see that she was basically comparing you from the jump to your brother. Remember, she kept when them when y'all first met and she wanted to pretend or... Show you off to uh, Mr. Shin and all that. And Bessie was dressing you up like Stephanie and all. You, you, you forgot all that. Well, she was basically trying to make you be a professional man and not eat reals all sloppy and stuff. You, you don't remember that. Well, she was comparing y'all two together. It's funny how you don't have a problem with that now. Well, well, then, oh, now you got a big problem with it now that the child broken up and now you realize that this whole time she been comparing you to your brother and now you got complaints about it now because y'all might be over. Jake, my sympathy only goes so thin for you and yeah, I feel sorry for you because she basically got played by the devil and she's still getting played and don't realize it and she didn't kick you to the curb for that Demira CEO position, but we already know that position not going to last too long. Once EJ get out, watch she be out of that CEO position. Because you already know once EJ out, he going to play a major role in EJ to taking the C or Chad end up taking the C or Chad and him gonna be at each other throw. That is Clyde and EJ don't go into World War Five, you know, because of what's going on with them. But Gabby, keep that seat warm for EJ. The way it's ticking down, I bet you EJ gonna have that seat again. Cause let's not forget, Johnny just a proxy for EJ. EJ can't vote right now. Once EJ get his shares back, watch how quick you be out of that CEO position. Once EJ get his shares back from the devil, that's it. The devil don't try to hurt him first, like he um, like he didn't snap that on um Alley real quick. But yeah, what, Gabby, enjoy that position while you got it, baby. You finna lose it all and don't even want to realize it. And you might be out of a job, and Gabby she. Gabby, she gonna be something you gonna have in a distant memory in the back of your brain somewhere. Cause I didn't told you you need to leave this alone. I didn't told you running somebody else's company, you might think it's cool and have a fancy title, but you forgot you need a company to you need something to connect to that company. Like Gabby Sheik, I don't know, like I said, I don't know why she won't just do it alone. She got to have it connected to the, the karaoke, or she got to have it connected to the Demaras. I don't know why she keep on doing that, but okay. Once you out of that seat, you better hope and pray. Gabby Sheik have, you better hope um, Gabby Sheik have the right foundation to survive.
Once they kick you out of the, 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 the mare, once you be out on your behind again. So, I'm waiting to see how that play out. Now, EJ and Clyde, and this war that's about to start, being, I don't care if my daddy needed a place to stay. I don't care if he needed, a, you know, somebody to watch over him while he on parole. You know your daddy, no, you know your daddy ain't no good. You know your daddy ain't gonna never be no good. And you know your daddy not gonna leave that fast money alone. He gonna be selling drugs in and out your apartment. Just give him time. Notice how his phone rang a whole lot for him to just be out of jail a quick 30 minutes and his phone already rang off the hook. That didn't tell you, hint, hint, he back to his old ways again. Okay. Look, that's a whole lot to deal with with a baby on the way. I'm just saying. And now that war fit the star, you and um Sierra, y'all gonna be one of the um, you know, casualty of this party that this war that's going down. So yeah. If I was you, um, um I forgot your name. If I was you, um, darn I just had it a few minutes. If I was you, um, Clyde's son, I go ahead and get him on out. The, get uh, I go ahead and get him on out the way right now while you still got time, because war is right waging and EJ ain't gonna back down and we know Clyde ain't gonna back down and y'all better not be releasing orphans. That's all I better know. Bad enough, y'all didn't release another serious criminal. Y'all for the release orphans too. Ben, protect your baby and your wife because you're gonna need you gonna need to put on your superhero cape by the time this war started, by the time this war ends. So just put on your superhero cape and be prepared for what's coming. You think the devil is gonna give you a run for your money? Oh no, Clyde and this war for to give you a big run for your money. So yeah, you might wanna watch that and keep an eye on your daddy. Um, we already know Roman Roman got him settled and he. Somehow gave him a job because he checked that he needed a short order cook. So Clyde fit in that because he was cooking in the prison. And it's a whole lot of forgiving going on this week for my liking. Then we got T.R. Cox and Lonnie Daddy. Now... We understand the little woman that dated T.R. and he beat her, slapped her around, and, you know, he had her doing drugs and stuff. We we, we understand, you know, she a little slow. Paulina, what's your excuse? You said this man almost beat you to death. Now, I know you ain't willing to forgive all them beatings and all that he did to you that fast. And talking about some, you know I love to give hugs. Oh, maybe he have changed. Y'all show feel y'all show enough y'all show give it um give people a whole lot of forgiveness for slapping you around and doing beating y'all up. I need about two or three years, in my opinion. I need about three or four years, maybe a whole century to pass before I forgive you. I'm not gonna forgive you that easy because you saying it. I have to go back there, revert back to that whooping you gave me that almost killed me. Or I almost didn't make it out of a lie for me. I have PTSD when it comes to you. I wouldn't want you nowhere near me or around me. I'm not understanding how y'all women say he abused y'all and y'all seem like y'all forgiving him so easily. Now, normally women that been abused by men, they'll be scared, shaking, and shivering when wanting the man nowhere near them. I'm not getting that from Paulina or that other woman. Why? And y'all said he used to beat y'all up and all that. Have y'all? He this one said he had her doing drugs and she wouldn't have forgiven and ain't scared of the man or nothing. Well, she a little scared of him. She a little scared of him, but she already improved. She not that smart when he called her and she went running to his um 
went running to his hotel room, she already improved. She ain't too smart, and he can easily, you know, off her with no problem. Paulina, I thought you was better than this. Yes, you know you can't stop lining for him for having a relationship once it do come out, but still, Paulina, this man was beating you. Remember, you hid your daughter away from this man for years. Are we really going to forgive this man and this man all these bruises and marks he gave you? Do you have any old battle wounds you can go back and look at and say, oh, he did this to me. I'm not going to forgive you that easy. You put this mark on me right here. Remember this mark here. Can we go back to a mark where, uh, where he abused you at and think about it and Think about it for a whole year or two before we start jumping on this victory and this forgiving train all of a sudden. Y'all some suck. I don't know what the I, I don't know what type of abuse train y'all was on or I understand you got to give forgiveness, but I, I'm sorry. I forgive you, but I still wouldn't want you near me, 10 feet near me, around me. I'll be scared. In fact, you get too close to me, I'll pull out the mace or a knife on you and start trying to, you know, cut you or whatever. I'm not understanding how y'all ain't acting like bru a bru bruised and battered women. Y'all giving this man too much leeway for me, for y'all to so-called got beaten and ab abused by this man. Most women in hell sudden ready to knock the you know what out of him if he got too close to you. You stay over there on that side of the room. I, better yet, I'll talk to you through the door. Yeah, it's just like y'all letting him around, letting him around the kids. Y'all comfortable around him. I don't see no fear in y'all eyes. Y'all talking and chatting, having conversations. Um, Didn't this man used to beat the devil out of y'all? And y'all just sitting there having conversations, a, a small talk over coffee. So are y'all both liars or he really did beat y'all? Because y'all ain't coming off at no abused women. Really, y'all not. Either days did it wrong, the writers did it wrong, or y'all not coming off at no abused woman. Now, the woman did, Miss Howard did give me some type of abuse vibe when we first met her. And she was scared when she answered that phone. She gave me abuse vibes then. It's just like she just happy to be around him and comfortable around him. He giving her roles to movies and stuff. And she all happy and excited. Then we got Paulina that hid her daughter away from this man for years. You letting him around you all up in your house, all around your personal property and your personal space. And you all hugging him, talking to him, letting him touch your grandkids and all this. Something. Correct me as I'm wrong, but I don't see no abused women act like this. I, that, that either days did it wrong or something not right in this picture. It's just me, maybe. Chad, don't nobody care about you. Don't nobody care that, oh, shoot, I messed up. I'm sorry. Don't nobody care about that. Really, don't nobody care. Don't nobody care that you you feel bad now that you realize you sucked that man up. And once it came out that that one EJ that kissed Abigail, it was the devil. Now all of a sudden you want to backtrack. Don't nobody care, Chad. Don't nobody feel sorry for you and your sob story you giving that. Oh, shoot, I screwed up. Remember, we was protecting Lucas. You had a bigger interest in this than running the running the Mara. So are we sorry now that we sought my brother up? Or are we sorry or not sorry at all that we got to see your position away from EJ? And now you running the well was running the Mara. Now Gabby took it away from you. So now all of a sudden you feeling guilty even though they told you and shot this. Well, you already knew the evidence was screwed up from the John, but you didn't care. You were just hanging on to that kiss that so-called EJ gave Abigail. And now all of a sudden you got a guilty conscience and can't help yourself all of a sudden. Check I don't care. You get what you deserve at this point. Don't nobody feel sorry for you. At least I don't feel sorry for you. Forget the guilty conscience. You weren't thinking about that conscience when you took that CEO position. You was all happy and decided to take that position away from EJ. Now that you got it, where the guilty conscience at? 
That's why I say, I say you pick and choose when they have a guilty conscience and when not to have one. You didn't have one when you took that CEO position or when it first happened, when you went on, uh, when it first happened, when Lucas told you to go along with this plan, you was all along with it then until you realized, oh shoot, he might be doing hard time for these lies. Then you realize how stupid you look when it came out that the devil actually kissed your wife and not EJ. Now you run around here looking dumb and stupid and now you trying to clear it up chad go away don't nobody care at this point um k you playing a very dangerous game that that dangerous game you was playing with bell calling yourself trying to look at what you can get out of the mirror your service package or whatever that was your retirement package you should Kate, you shouldn't want nothing or no parts of the mirror. I'm still not. I'm still lost and confused. Why are you still dealing with the mirror? Stefano embarrassed you for centuries. How are you still hanging around the mirror and talking about a service package? Where's your self-confidence? Where's your pride? Why can't you just stay out of the mirror and leave the mirror with your head held up, with your head up high? But I was trying to take a little piece of change. I guess it's all about the bottom dollar for you or the how you can embarrass yourself to get the dollar these days. Because I wouldn't want nothing from the mirror after eat after Stefano died. I wouldn't want no parts of the mirror. I don't know much know why you still involved with the mirror at this point. You just a waste of space when it comes to the mirror and how EJ embarrass you. I mean how Stefano embarrass you over the years. Playing with you, manipulating you, and you still around. That man laughing in his grave at you. For real, he is. And here you go. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And here you go talking about a service package for you can at least get some change with, for, from the mayor. And Bell told you it's not going to happen. You ain't getting nothing from the mayor. I'll give you this little service package and show you what you know what you can get. But you ain't going to get it. ain't going to be what you expected it's going to be. You still hanging on trying to get a Demera dollar. What's that? The why are you so desperate for the mirror dollar? Is this gonna be? Is this supposed to be your pride? Is that your pride speaking that you think you deserve something or entitled to something, the mirror or any monetary value of the mirror? Is this your pride speaking for you? Because, like I said, the way Stefano embarrassed you over the years, I wouldn't want a penny. I wouldn't want to look at the mirror. I wouldn't want to have no parts of the mirror. That would be a, a memory I'll forget about for years to so come until the day I die. And I probably still wouldn't think about the mirror, even in my grave. And you still hanging around the mirror. Okay, go find your pride and your go go find your self esteem somewhere and get out of the mirror business and stay away from the mirror at this point. Um, Nancy, well, Kayla lost her job trying to stand up for trying to stand up for Marlena. So Nancy jumps in and then say, "Look." You want to marry um, Leo, that gold digger? Well, you going to have to go through me. Don't let me, you know, she did the law. I drag my I drag my feet in this divorce. Yeah, it'll be years, century before you can marry Leo unless Marlena keep her job. So I kind of like that she stood up for Marlena because um, even though it does suck that Marlena could lose her job because of this devil situation, but... Like I said, she could have went. She could have been way up here to that fire a long, long time ago. Wrote a book about it. It wouldn't be drama, spicy, hot tea. Her patient, and everybody wouldn't be running away from her right now. She wouldn't have to do damage control or try to keep her job or hold on to her job. She should have been got ahead of this fire. First time she knew about it, and then, you know, it started picking up legs, it started getting legs and walking. She should have went ahead of that and wrote, went ahead, like I said, wrote a book about it. She chose not to. Now the fire out there, and now it's just burning and burning up acres and acres that she can't afford. And Marlene, you're going to end up losing your job. And it sucks for you, but you could have been settled at this, and you could have been better ahead of this fire. Like I said, 
I don't know what type of pedestal Salem got you on or University Hospital got you on when you thinking that you couldn't find a way to spin this in your, you know, the right direction for it wouldn't affect your job, but you chose not to. You chose to keep quiet all these years about years about the devil and you know all that stuff. So now look at it. What what done in the dark come to the light. So Marlene, I can't feel too sorry for you that you about to lose your job and everything. Thing because you kind of didn't get us head of this devil situation. So I feel sorry for you, but I can't really help you out there. Um, Allie, you in danger. I'm surprised the devil revealed himself like he did. Even though Johnny was fighting him the whole time, you was talking to him, being a hypocrite per usual, blaming him for your situation, even though you say you taking ownership for that. It's my fault. I did that, but we don't hear it. But in a way, you accepting accountability, but you're kind of throwing it on your brother, even though your brother do have a big mouth and he should be protecting you more than what he doing because we know this ain't him talking, this the devil talking, even though you should own this and say it's my fault and stop blaming your brother for this, but it's the devil talking. What else can we talk about? But yeah, now you know why your brother acting the way he acting, and now you realize that ain't your brother. That's the devil this whole entire time. Hopefully, he won't try to take you out. But anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all not morning, and have a good weekend. Bye.